Okay, so I'm making this to show you how to solve some of these problems on uh, wave harmonics on a string. So the first two are just taking um, a wave and figuring out the fundamental frequency and then using that to figure out other frequencies of harmonics. And then the third one is like a simple example of like if you have uh, a note that gets played, how to solve for the wavelength and the frequency and all that. Okay, so uh, the first one, it tells you you got a string and it's vibrating with the frequency of 90 hertz to form a standing wave with five antinotes, right? So there's one, two, three, four, five. So that means this is the fifth harmonic, right? Because harmonic is equal to the number of antinodes. So uh, the first thing you got to do is figure out what the fundamental frequency is. That's the key to doing all these. Okay? So we know that the frequency of the nth harmonic is equal to n, which is some number of harmonics, times the fundamental frequency. So in this case, this is the fifth harmonic, and it tells us that it's 90 hertz. So that means 90 hertz is equal to 5 times the fundamental frequency, right? Because 90 is f at 5, and n is 5. So 90 equals 5 times the fundamental. So then if I divide 5 over, that cancels. So 90 over 5 equals the fundamental. So therefore, 90 over 5, uh, that's 18 hertz. So 18 hertz is going to be our fundamental frequency. OK, so now let's use that to come down here and figure out, once you know the fundamental, you can figure out anything else. right? So down here, we want to know what frequency is producing this wave pattern. Okay, so how many harmonics are there? There's one, two, three, four. All right, so here there's four harmonics. And so I want to know what frequency will produce that. So same equation. All right, so now the frequency of the fourth harmonic is equal to four times the fundamental, which was 18. So that means our frequency is 4 times 18, 36, 72 hertz. Right? Okay, so that was an example of going smaller. Here's the same process except going bigger, right? So strength vib string vibrates with a frequency of 9 hertz to form this standing wave, and it's got three antinodes. So three antinodes means that's the third harmonic. So let's do the same thing. So the frequency of the third harmonic is equal to three times the fundamental. And it tells us the third harmonic is nine. So nine equals three times F naught. So that means that the fundamental frequency is three hertz. And so now we come down here and we want to know how to produce this. So once we know that, I can count the number of harmonics, right? Antinodes. So there's four harmonics here. And so, I mean, you could multiply this out using the equation, or you could just say, okay, each one of these harmonics takes three hertz to make it, right? So three hertz would make a harmonic that looks like this. Six hertz would make the second harmonic, right? So it would look like this. Nine hertz would make this one. So that means this one has to be 12 hertz. All right, can you see that? Each one of these is three. So, I mean, if I use the equation, I can say the fourth harmonic is n times the fundamental, which gives you the same answer. All right, but going up, it's easier because you just know once you know the fundamental, each one of these is that amount. So you can just tack it on. Okay, so third one. This one, a group of students in a physics lab performs a series of experiments with a set of tubes and a tuning fork. In the first trial, they use a tube which the length can be extended. The length of the tube when the sound resonates for the first time is a half a meter, and it gives you the speed of sound as 340. So we need to get the wavelength and then the frequency. So for this one, if you know that something's producing the first harmonic, that means that thing looks like this. So that's what the harmonic inside the tube looks like. But this is only half of a wave. 
right? A whole wave would be two harmonics. Because, I don't know if I explained this too well in the videos, but a whole wave is a crest and a trough. That's a whole wave. And so this whole thing, it's just vibrating up and down. There's another wave coming back that's a crest and a trough, right? So what we have here is two half waves, two harmonics give you a whole wave. Okay, so if we want the wavelength of the sound wave, anytime you're doing this, you can say that the length of the tube, right? Here's the length of the tube. That's half of a wavelength for the fundamental. So if I want to know the wavelength, the wavelength would be two times the length of the tube, the wavelength at the fundamental. So if the length of the tube is a half a meter, that means the wavelength of this wave has to be one meter, right? Because this L is 0.5 meters from right here. Okay, so now that we know the wavelength of this original wave, we can figure out the frequency. And once you know wavelength, you can use this equation. This is the one that you're going to use 90% of the time. Velocity is frequency times wavelength. And it gives you the speed of sound is 340. So 340 equals frequency times the wavelength is 1. Wow, that's easy. So that means the frequency is 340 hertz. All right, so hope that helped. You should be able to figure out the rest of those problems. They're all some example of that.